So I can say this with complete confidence that one of the most useful functions in R is the mutate function. If you're performing any type of data analysis, you're going to be creating new columns. You're going to be modifying existing columns. And that's where the mutate function comes into play. So we're going to learn mutate function really well. And in this video, we're going to look at a few basic examples. And then in future videos, we'll make it a little bit more interesting. So initially, what I want to show is uh, just a few simple examples, just to give you the concept. Now, at the moment, I'm on the documentation for the mutate function. So if I scroll down a little bit, as I mentioned, what mutate can help us do is create new columns. So in one of the examples here, what they're doing is taking a data frame, selecting some specific columns out of it, and then creating a new column based upon an existing column. So they take the mass for each of the row and then divide it by the average of the mass column. And this basically gives you a normalized column or a normalized vector. And we're going to be looking at a similar example. So what I'm going to do is switch to R and we can start looking at a few examples. So I noticed that in the data, we have a column for reviews per month. But what would be interesting is having a column for reviews per year. And what we can do is simply just multiply each of the rows in this data by 12. And that's where mutate is going to help us. So if I pipe the data into a mutate function, and let's name the new column reviews per year. All it's going to be is just reviews per month. And then multiply that with 12. So once I do that and go to the right, at the end of the data frame, you're going to see this new reviews per year column added. Now, of course, since this row was NA initially, uh, the, the derived column out of that is also going to have an NA value here. But uh, as you can see, it helped us create a new column. And perhaps what we can do is just round this to make it a little bit more uh, readable. So I'm just going to put this entire operation inside of a round function. So once I run this, now that value is going to be rounded up to the nearest integer. So at the moment, we can see that there's a new column added. But to in order to save it, we actually have to assign it to a data frame. So what I'm going to do is just call it data2 just so that we have a copy. Now, if I look at data2, we're going to see that it's going to be at the end of it. Something else I want to show is basically showing how we can use if else with mutate. That's a common operation that I do all the time to check the to check a logic. So as an example here for the price column, perhaps we could check if any of these listings are less than 100 or if they're more than 100. And mutate can help us there as well. So what I'm going to do is basically create a new column and I'm going to call it price less than 100. And then basically, we're going to use an if else here. So if else, and then within this, we're going to have a few arguments. So we're going to test if the price is less than 100. And then if it is the case, then we can just say yes within quotations. And then if this is not the case, then we can say no. And then once again, I'm going to assign it to data2 again. And what it's going to do is override it. So once I run both of these, we're going to see that at the end of the data frame, we're going to have this new column. So anywhere where uh, you see n, that's where the price is greater than 100. And anywhere you see y, there's uh, the price is less than 100. So those are two uh, simple examples. Now, as we saw in the documentation, they were creating a normalized column. So perhaps we could do something similar as well for the price column. What I'm going to do is basically create a price index or price normalized. Let's call it price norm and take the price and then divide it by the average of the price column. So basically, I'm just going to use the mean function here. And what mean is going to do is calculate the price uh, average. And once I do that, and actually, I should use data too, because we're continuously adding more columns to it. And so if I go here, we can see that basically we have this price normalized column. So this uh, this value is close to one, which means it's pretty close to the average. Something greater than one would basically mean that it's higher than the average. 
and something much lower than one means that uh, it's it's lower than the average price. So these these values are just about half of the average price. One last interesting thing that I want to show in this video is using some regex. So I know that I've mentioned that we will be looking at regex in a little bit more detail later on, but we can also use regex within the mutate function. So one interesting thing we could do is try to capture some numbers out of this. So as an example, in this listing, I see that there's a number one here. There's a number one here. And then as you scroll through, you're going to see other examples as well. So what if we were just able to extract the numbers because it's of interest to us? Perhaps we're doing some type of uh, text analysis in which we want to analyze some information. What we could do is take our data and just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to capture here the name column and we'll then uh, mutate on that. So if I just run this, we're just going to have this column and then here we can do mutate and I'm going to call it name numbers and then what we can do is pipe the name into a string extract function and once again we're going we're gonna to look at it a little bit more in detail this string extract function but here what I can do is specify a pattern so in order to get some type of a digit as part of the pattern we can put within quotation marks and then I'm going to do these double back backslashes and then to signify a digit we can use D here. Now perhaps uh, if I just show what this looks like you're going to see that we're capturing this number but I saw that there were sometimes numbers which were something like 2000 so in order to cap capture more than just one number we can put here these um, these angled brackets and then basically a number so basically it has to be at least one but it could be more so with this one comma I'm specifying that it it could be one or it could be more so there's no upper limit and then once I do that scroll down a little bit I think if I go a little bit further there we go so this number 2000 it's uh, it's basically just uh, one full number and we're capturing all of it now we can also see that there are some other ones like three and two to capture these ones you'll have to get a little bit better at regex but just want to show here a proof of concept perhaps what we could also do is capture the first word in each of the sentence so basically like I see that between the first word there's a space for pretty much all of the lines uh, it's another example of, of um, a word describing the description of the listing usually like the first word is supposed to be a interesting word to describe what your listing is so it could be another uh, column or value of uh, analytical interest so what I'm gonna do is use another mutate function here and within this I'm gonna call it name first and then basically take our name column and then once again I'm gonna use the string extract and then within the pattern I'm gonna specify double backslashes and then to get the first character what we can do is just enter here w dot and then plus and then question mark and then double back, uh, backslashes again and s so just to go over this pattern a little bit basically the w lets us uh, get any type of characters but uh, with the with the dot and the plus we're basically specifying that it could be one character, it could be multiple characters. Uh, and then these double backsplash, uh, back backslash S, what it lets us do is to define that there's a space between the first word and the, uh, and the one after it. So what it's going to do is basically just chip off the first, uh, uh, first word in each of the uh, text. So if I look at it here, we can see that we get some type of a description for an apartment, which is a little bit easy to analyze rather than read through all of the uh, all of the text descriptions so I just wanted to provide a few different examples uh, don't worry about the regex at the moment we're going to look at it more in detail later on but I just wanted to show an example of how we can integrate that within our data set so I could also of course save this to data 2 just so that we have a copy of it and then once I do that we're going to have just this uh, summarized data so I appreciate it and I will see you next time.